how do proof trees for modal logic work? Stick around and I'll show you. Hello everyone, welcome to The Attic. My name's Mark Jago, I'm a philosophy professor in the UK. In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through how proof trees for basic modal logic work. And in a follow-up video, I'm gonna be showing you how to add to these, how we do proof trees for all different kinds of modal logic, all the different systems. So if that sounds good to you, do me a favor before we get going, Give this video a big thumbs up, hit subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications. Okay, let's get going. So the good news is, because we've already looked at proof trees for propositional logic, to do proof trees for modal logic, we just add a few bits. So we're gonna add rules for the modalities, the box and the diamond, but before we get to that, we just need a little tweak in the way that we write down sentences in our proof trees. And to see why we need that, let's just recap really quickly how we write things down for proof trees in propositional logic. We have a branch and we have some sentences, P and Q written on it. And if we're lucky, we might also get not P and then we can close that branch, okay? And that's because a sentence in propositional logic, it's true, it's false, but it's not both. So if we got P being true and not P being true, so P being false, that's something we can't have, and that's why we can close that branch. But in modal logic, we don't just talk about a sentence being true or false. The idea is we've got different possible worlds and some sentence P, well, it might be true at one possible world, but false at another. So what would it even mean to say that P is true or that we've got P and not P? Well, if P was true at one possible world and not P was true at a different possible world, that wouldn't be a contradiction and that wouldn't allow us to close a branch. So we need some way of thinking about these different possibilities in our proof tree, okay? And the easiest way of doing that is we just kind of simulate the different possible worlds in the notation of the proof tree. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write down extra bit of information for each sentence. So we're not just gonna write down a single sentence on its own, we're gonna put a number next to each sentence, okay? So that might be a zero there and a zero there, and it might be a one there. And what that would mean is that here we're talking about some possible world, here we're talking about the same possible world, but here we'd be talking about a different possible world, okay? So because we've got P at one possible world, but not P at a different possible world, we wouldn't be able to close that branch. So we shouldn't have that there. Let's get rid of that. Now, just to be clear here, we're doing proof theory here. We're not really doing semantics. So we're not officially talking about possible worlds or anything semantic like that. These are just little numbers. They're just tags that we write next to each sentence. But in thinking about why are we putting in these numbers, you might have possible worlds kind of at the back of your mind, okay? And we're going to see in the rules that we use for the modalities Basically, these rules are going to help us reason about these tags kind of as if they're possible worlds. So officially, no mention of possible worlds, but kind of unofficially, yeah, that's what's going on here. OK, so with that in mind, let's have a look at how these new tags work in modal logic proof trees. OK, so first up, we need to know how to start off a tree. It's pretty much the same as before. So if we've got some premises, let's say A, B, and C, and we want to know if we can prove some conclusion D from them, then what we're gonna do, just like before, is we're gonna write down the premises A, B, C, and the negation of the conclusion D, and we're all gonna give them an initial tag, zero. Okay, so zero is the tag that we start off with, Think of that as our base possible world, okay? So this is the world that we're testing. Can it make the premises true and the conclusion 
false. That's effectively what we're doing here. And then we're going to apply the rules. OK, so we need to know what those rules are. All of the rules from propositional logic carry over. We add in the tags, but those rules don't do anything with the tags. So, for instance, here is the conjunction rule from propositional logic. It says that if you've got a conjunction A and B, then what you do is you extend the branch and you add A and B to that branch. Well, in modal logic, we're going to have some tag on that premise. And the rule tells us add the same tag to the conclusions. So if you've got some premise, A and B, nine, let's say number nine written down after it, you're going to write the same number nine down after A and the same number nine after B. OK, get it? So all of the rules from propositional logic carry over in that form. OK, so it's the same number in the premise and in the conclusion, the bit that you add to the branch. In particular, the rule for closing a branch also follows that format. So in propositional logic, the rule went, if you've got A and you've got not A, you can close the branch. So our modified modal logic rule, it's going to have the same tag in the A and the not A. OK, so we've just done the same thing. We've added the same tag to each sentence. And if we've got that, then what we can do is close that branch. The really important point to note here is it's got to be the same tag. So it's no good having, you know, a nine and not a 12 on a branch. That won't let you close the branch because that's like a being true at one possible world and false at another possible world. OK, that's that's consistent. Something could be true somewhere and false somewhere else. That's not going to allow us to close the branch. We have to have the same sentence being true and false or it and its negation both being true in the very same possible world. And we translate that to a proof tree by saying they've got the same tag. So if you've got that a followed by some number, not a followed by the same number in the same branch, you can close that branch. OK, so that's how we capture all of the rules from propositional logic in modal logic proof trees. Now, let's look at the extra rules that we're going to have for box and diamond. OK, there's going to be four of these rules. There's going to be box, diamond, and then one for not box and one for not diamond. Let's have a look at those negation ones first because they're the simplest. If we've got not box A followed by some tag, Nice and simple, we just transform that into diamond not A and add the same tag. OK, so this is using this principle of duality. Box and diamond are jewels of one another. So we can transform not box into diamond not. And in exactly the same way, if we've got not diamond A followed by some tag, then Pretty much the same thing. We transform that into not box A, followed by the same tag. So in these rules, it's always the same tag that gets added to the conclusion. OK, so whatever tag you've got in the premise, whatever number you've got in the premise, you add that same number to the conclusion. So, so far, there's really been no action over this side of things. OK, all the rules we've looked at, those numbers just sit there and don't do anything. The next two rules, the box rule and the diamond rule, are where these numbers come into play. Let's look at the diamond rule. If we've got diamond A n, that's like saying that A is possible relative to the possible world being picked out by this tag. OK, officially, there's no possible worlds here, but that's kind of how we're imagining things. So if we think about that in terms of a model, what does it mean? Well, it means there is some accessible possible world where A is true. So we have to do two things to this branch. First of all, we have to say that A is true somewhere, not necessarily at the same place. So if we're starting off with N, we don't necessarily want to say that A is true at N. It's true somewhere. So what we're going to do is extend the branch and add A M where M is some tag that we haven't used so far. So since we're using numbers as our tags, we're kind of adding them sequentially. So if we start off with zero, we would add one here. And if we've got one, two, three, four, five already used in our branch, 
we would use the next number. So we would use six here. So M is the first number that hasn't already been used in that branch. It's a new tag, a new number. We also need to say that M is accessible from N. There is this accessibility relationship between the two possible worlds. And we're going to write that down like this. N goes to M. So this line here, it's not a sentence of modal logic. It's not something that we're trying to work out whether it's true or false, whether it follows from these premises or whatever. It's just an extra bit of information that we are recording in our proof tree. And, you know, under the, the way we're thinking about it, where the N's and the M's relate to possible worlds, lines like this tell us which of those worlds are accessible from which. OK, so whenever we're applying the diamond rule, diamond tells us something about what's going on at some accessible world, we're writing down that A is true at that accessible world, but we're also writing down the fact that M is accessible from N. N's where we start, M's where we get to, and we also write down that they're accessible. Now let's have a look at the box rule. If we've got box A tagged with N, again, let's think about how this would work in a model, OK? If A is necessary at world N, if we've got box A at world N, what does that mean? Well, it would mean that every accessible world is one that makes N true. So for this, we wouldn't be adding any new worlds to our model. We would be looking at the model we've already got and saying, for any world that's accessible, of all the worlds that we've already got, if any of them are accessible from N, then A had better be true there. OK, so that's an if then. It's if I've got an accessible world, then A had better be true there. So how do we capture this if then in our rule? Well, the if bit is going to be part of the premise and the then bit is going to be part of the conclusion. So this bit's important. We're going to need an extra premise there. And the extra premise is going to be that I can get from the world that we start with, N, to some world M. Might be a different world, might be the same, doesn't really matter. So what we're saying there is if we have these two bits of information, namely that box A at N and we've got this world M that's accessible, if I've got both those bits of information, then I can add the information that A is true at M. So effectively what we're saying is box A at N allows me to add A at any accessible world. OK, so there we have the rules for box and diamond. That gives us all we need to do proofs for basic modal logic. OK, so in basic modal logic K, if we're trying to prove some conclusion from the premises, what we do is we write down the premises, the negation of the conclusion, and we apply the rules that we've just talked about. If the tree closes, then we've proved that conclusion from those premises. We proved it in basic modal logic K. If, on the other hand, the tree finishes open, then we've shown that you can't prove that conclusion from those premises in basic modal logic K. OK, guys, that is it for this video. That is proof trees for basic modal logic. In the next video, we're going to be carrying on with this and we're going to be looking at how we take these basic modal logic proof trees and add to them so that we can do proofs for all the different systems of modal logic. So I hope you join me back for that. If you've got any questions on this, leave me a comment down below. Hit subscribe, hit thumbs up. That really, really helps me out. And I hope to see you back for the next one. <laughs>